Hu Tiu Nam Vang is a popular and authentic Vietnamese noodle soup with its origins rooted in southern Vietnam along the borders of Cambodia, where the melting pot of cultures resulted in the fusion of culinary traditions. Nam Vang is the Vietnamese name for Phnom Penh, which is the capital of Cambodia, and Hu Tiu Nam Vang shares a ton of similarities and ingredients to the Cambodian Ke Tiu Phnom Penh. So while there is a ton of overlap, there are some distinct differences due to regional adaptations and culinary preferences. Hu Tiu Nam Vang is typically lighter and more delicate in flavor, whereas Ke Tiu's broth is richer and has a deeper umami flavor. Today, we'll be making my mom's recipe for Hu Tiu Nam Vang that I grew up eating my entire life. So make sure you like, comment, share, and save this video. All right, y'all, remember to wash your hands. Now the first thing we'll do is parboil our pork bones to help reduce some of its porky odor and make sure that our broth stays nice and clean. I'm using two pounds of pork neck bones today, but you can use any kind of pork bones you want. And then I also have two pounds of pork butt and I'm gonna parboil both of these for about five to 10 minutes. And then I'll drain, rinse, and scrub with cold water to remove any scum attached to the pork. Then make sure you wash your pot too, and then fill it back up with water. Now while the water is coming up to a boil, we'll get the rest of our ingredients for the broth prepped. First, I have half a cup of dried shrimp that I'll rehydrate in some room temperature tap water for about 10 minutes. Then I have a medium daikon, which I'll peel and then just cut up into chunks. And the daikon will add a subtle sweetness to our broth. Now to our pot of water, we'll add in our parboiled pork neck bones and our pork butt. And if you like this recipe and you wanna learn how to make more of your favorite Vietnamese and Asian dishes, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications to stay up to date on all my latest posts. We'll add in our daikon, a whole yellow onion, and you can choose to char the onion if you want, but for soups like Hu Tiu and Bun Bo Hui, where the broth is already complex, I personally don't think charring the aromatics makes a huge difference in the end results. Then we'll add in our rehydrated shrimp, and this is just the piece of dried squid, and we'll also add it to the pot. We'll bring this up to a boil, skim off any impurities, lower the heat, and we'll let this simmer covered for about an hour. Now, while our broth is simmering, we'll move on to prepping all of our toppings. First, we'll make our tempma, or fried pork fat. Now, this is partially frozen pork fat, and I like tossing this in the freezer for a couple hours before I cut it to help firm up the fat and make it easier to cut. And we'll just cut these up into quarter inch pieces. To a dry pan on medium low, I'll add our pork fat and let that slowly render, allowing it to essentially fry in its own fat and this will take anywhere between 10 to 12 minutes. Now at the end, I'll crank up the heat to medium high and cook for another minute or two to get the tepma to turn a golden brown color. We'll pull the pork fat and place on a plate with a paper towel to absorb some of the excess oil. And we'll season that with a pinch of salt and put that to the side. Now I am gonna reserve some of the pork lard to saute our ground pork and quail eggs in, and you can safely discard the rest of the oil. Now to a clean pan on medium high, we'll add a couple tablespoons of the pork lard, drop in a tablespoon of minced garlic, and saute until fragrant. We'll add in about a pound of ground pork, then using a spatula, break up all that pork so that there are no big clumps. We'll season this with a teaspoon of fish sauce, sugar, 
MSG, and some fresh ground black pepper. We'll get that all incorporated and cooked through, and then we'll remove the pork from the pan. I'm going to repeat this step with two cans of quail eggs that I've drained. So to that same pan, we'll add some pork lard, saute our minced garlic, drop in our quail eggs, and we'll season with all the same things. Now for the quail eggs, since they're already cooked through, this step should only take a couple of minutes. Then we'll move both the quail eggs and the ground pork to the side, and we'll get started on our shrimp. Now, you could treat the shrimp exactly the same way that we did the ground pork and quail eggs, but today we're gonna go super simple by just blanching them. First, we'll depoop all of our shrimp by using a toothpick or skewer, stabbing it between the fourth and fifth abdominal segment, and just lifting that doo doo out of there. Now, since we're leaving the shell on, I am going to cut off some of the sharp bits of the shrimp. On the head, we'll cut off the rostrum, and on the tail, the telson. I'll cut off the long antenna to make them a little bit easier to manage as well. Now, I do like eating my shrimp with the shell on, but you can choose to deshell and skip the cutting process if that's your preference. Now, once all the shrimps are processed, we have a couple of options on how to cook them. I'm personally gonna cook them in a separate pot of boiling salted water, but alternatively, you could cook the shrimp directly in our big stock pot too. Now, the shrimp shells and head produces a ton of flavor that will really amp up the soup, but it will also impart an orange hue to the broth. Now, for me, because we're already getting the essence of shrimp from the dried shrimp, I'm okay with cooking the shrimp separately because the hallmark of this soup is its light, clean, and clear broth. So the choice is yours here on how you want to cook the shrimp, but we'll just blanch these in a pot of water for a couple of minutes to just barely cook them through. Now, the last part of our prep is getting all of our herbs and veggies done. So I have some chrysanthemum, and you can also use Chinese celery here instead. But I'm just cutting the thicker parts of the stem off and then cutting the rest into about one and a half inch segments. Then I have some garlic chives, which is also known as Chinese chives, and we'll also cut these up into one and a half inch pieces. Once that's done, we'll move back to our broth. Now, after an hour of simmering, I'm gonna remove the onion and daikon so that it doesn't get a chance to dissolve into the broth, which would produce a cloudier broth. Now, once we've removed that, I'll continue to let this simmer for another hour or so or until the pork butt is cooked through and tender. We'll pull the pork butt out, wrap it in some plastic wrap to prevent it from drying out, and then I'll stick it in the fridge to cool down to make it easier to slice later. Now to season our broth, I'm gonna add in a one inch nub of rock sugar, three tablespoons of MSG, and four tablespoons of fish sauce. Now with everything, my recommendation is to season to taste, as taste is subjective, but just check out how light and clean that broth looks though. Now once we have all that done, the last thing is to cook our noodles and assemble our bowl. We're using these fresh rice stick noodles or hutiu today, but you can also use thin or wide egg noodles, or a combination of both. And I like my noodles al dente, so I'm just dropping them in a pot of boiling water for maybe 10 to 20 seconds before removing them. And then it's time to assemble our bowl. I'll start by adding a bed of our chrysanthemum, the rice noodles we just cooked. I'll spoon over some of our ground pork. Add in our sliced pork butt. Some shrimp. a few of our quail eggs, and our garlic chives. We'll ladle in that beautiful light and clear broth. And then I'm gonna garnish that with our thepma, fried shallots, and some black pepper. And just like that, you've made hu tiu nam bang at home. As always, the principal recipe is on my blog at feedthepudge.com. And if you've made it this far, let me know in the comments section what your favorite Vietnamese noodle soup is. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy.